So I'm really not happy. Yeah, it look. Yes, it looks like the NHS is starting to go downhill. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the diary. So yes, I'm annoyed. Do you want to know why? I got a text message today about an appointment that I have at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. <clears throat> now, normally the NHS sends me letters about appointments up and coming at least three weeks in advance. But today, no, they sent me a text message one day in advance. <laughs> yeah. Why? Such stupidity in this. Not only that, but we're in what sounds like and what appears to be a privatised building that's doing NHS stuff. It's like around the corner, miles away from the local hospital, and it's like, uh, what? We're in this fancy schmancy building that's miles away from anywhere. And they expect me to get in the, into that building when I'm at least half an hour train ride away from said city for 10 a.m. <laughs> We've told them countless times that we want appointments to be after 10 a.m. because getting there on public transport is just awkward. Yes, getting the, yes, we'd have to get there public transport because, like I said in a previous video, I'm pretty sure I said it, my sister's gone away! Yay! Which means we have no car. Which means we have no sister taxi. <clears throat> Trying to organise a taxi for tomorrow morning so we can get down to the station as well is just rough. Why? Why do people insist on using taxis for school runs? Are you really that busy that you just can't walk your kid to school? I understand if you're both working or if it's just you and you've got like three or four kids to take care of in the morning. That's understandable. But to use up every single taxi service available just for school runs that early in the morning is just... It's just awkward. Because it means people like me who have surprise summons to a hospital and now don't have a taxi available to get down to the train station in time for a train. I mean, with my knees, I could, even with my knees I could probably walk it, but my mum, my mum's got hip problems, back problems and all sorts of other stuff. She would struggle walking down to the station in time and even if we decided to take a walk up the hill to see if there are any taxis on the taxi rank waiting. We'd have to take it slowly because my mum can't necessarily get up the hill in one go. She has, she's doing quite well about that actually. She actually does manage to get up, up the hill in one go, but she's breathless when she gets to the top. She is literally out of breath when she gets to the top. But before, when she was on 40 a day smoking, she couldn't get to the top of the hill without having a break in the middle. So she's doing really well. <laughs> Speaking of that, 40 a day, no longer. No longer 40 a day, she's on zero. And she's done that since I was in uni. There was a year when I was in uni that she had a really bad chest infection and she couldn't get up to go out and buy herself more fags. And because I wasn't there to go out and buy her some, she was like, um, I've just smoked my last cigarette. I literally have just smoked my last cigarette. My sister got back during that time and she's like, why are you so irritable? And my mum's like, I've just quit smoking. And it was like, oh. <laughs> That's why you're such a pain in the butt. <laughs> and it's like, GG on her, well done for doing it this long because it's been I think three years now ish three years going from 40 a day to zero cold turkey 
Well done. <laughs> I couldn't do cold turkey. Cold turkey with me just won't work. I do not have the willpower for cold turkey. But that's something that I didn't necessarily want to get into completely today, but it just irritates me the way that the NHS is expecting everyone to be able to get somewhere for a certain time. It's like, oh, we've booked this for you. It's, it's at this time. Do you not know I'm working on public transport? I mean, we've had appointments in that city for 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Granted, the earliest train is around 7 o'clock, if not a bit earlier than that, but the train gets in at, like, 8 a.m. or quarter past. And it's like, uh, we're on public transport, we have to get trains, that's not gonna work. Unless you're willing to organise us, patient care driver, we can't get there for 8 o'clock. Uh, Granted, it's good that they're saying 10, it's a bit easier, but it's still awkward because it is literally in the back end of the city, it's like, like I said, it's just around the corner from the big main hospital, but it's like, it's not as around the corner as I'm making it out or as some of you guys might be thinking, it's like, here's the hospital and the building's like, all the way over there, kind of around the corner. No. How on earth do you expect people to do that with no car? I mean, if you want benefits, you've got to get train fare, which for me it's going to cost £10 plus just for one person. And there's me and my mum going. You're looking at a taxi because none of the city buses go to that space. You only go up to the hospital, and even then they can take ages to do it because they go around every stupid little housing estate along the way. <laughs> so that's at least £15 on in the taxi at least, if not at least 10 for the taxi. So that's at least 20 No, 35 quid gone already before you even got there. And we don't know if there's a cafe or anything like that. I mean, there's got to be some level of refreshment because it's a hospital building. You've got to have refreshment in a hospital building because people are going to be visiting other people. But... <laughs> it just makes it more and more awkward to do it and expensive to do it. But if you're on benefits, you're expected to pay that much money. And because it's not a part of Derriford, it's not a part of Derriford, which is the local hospital, there's a possibility that we're not going to be allowed to actually claim that money back. Because unless the appointment is actually at that hospital, they're like, no, sorry, it's nothing to do with us, we can't claim this back. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is basically it's just looking like the NHS is already going downhill to, and going towards privatisation because this, this is just stupid. Normally getting a letter three, four weeks in advance to getting a text message one day in advance, like I said earlier. It's just horrendously stupid. If I'd been working on such a contract as Zero Hours, it would have been really, really hard for me to ring up the boss and say, look, this has happened. I've had no forewarning of this, so I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to say that I can't come in tomorrow. I couldn't give you any more warning. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. And because of that, they that boss can quite easily turn around and say, well, sorry, then you're fired. Don't bother coming in later on in the week. Because I couldn't give them any more warning. 
of it because the hospital didn't give me any more warning. It's how bad this country is and it's how bad people can be, how nasty people can be, that that because even if it's not your fault, because you couldn't give them plenty of warning, they see you as the awkward one. They see you as the one causing trouble for the sake of causing trouble when actually you were given one day warning so what were you supposed to do i mean it's lucky that i don't have a proper job at the minute i mean i want to say not that i really want one because i kind of do but it's the sense of i can't cope i physically won't be able to cope in a proper working environment depending on where it is all the jobs near me everyone's like oh you could do this you could do that you could do the other and i'm just like yeah, but my dyspraxia. Yeah, but I'm four foot eight. How am I going to reach? Yeah, but my dyspraxia again. If you're going to offer me a footstool to reach that, I'm just going to fall flat on my butt. I physically cannot do most of the jobs around that are available around me because of this, that, and the other kind of problem that I have with myself. Not only that, any customer service work. If I have a bad customer, as much as I trust that I will be able to stay calm, I also don't trust that I'll be able to stay calm every day. There are days when I will just get really bad, really annoyed, really quickly. And that's what I don't want, that's what I want to avoid. I know that I can manage it every so often, but I can't manage it all the time. Because I get really annoyed with people quite easily quite quickly on a bad day and depending on where I am, who I'm with or whatever, I can have bad days quite often. So imagine me working in a cafe restaurant with my dyspraxia and that. It's just not gonna work. <laughs> but no, that's it for me today guys. Ha Today's question is, have you uh, had any awkward moments like this before when you've had just short amount of notice at all or you've had to give someone the shortest amount of notice possible because of uns unforeseen circumstances let me know down below so that's it for me today guys i'll see you tomorrow see ya Welcome to another